I'm Chris Banger, I'm a Fisheries Technical Specialist in the West Midlands for the Environment Agency and here we're on the River Severn today down in what I call the Lower River Severn below Worcester uh, at Pixham and uh, today we have been stocking some barbel um, and these barbel are really important for a study that we're doing but most importantly working with the anglers down in this area. So the syndicate group that are here at Pixham Anglers is we're working with them uh, putting these barbel in but these barbel today have got a little bit of added technology they have what we call pit transponders uh, implanted in them and some acoustic tags implanted in them. Today uh, here on the Severn we have stocked 250 barbel today and those barbel have come from our fish farm at Calverton uh, where they have been reared they're about 32 months old in total or, or three plus summers that we've had in there so these are really fit fish that we put in today um, and they have been conditioned at the Calverton Fish Farm to actually go into a flowing environment like this, this river today. And although the river is a little bit higher than we would like, it's really nice to see that it's quite calm down here with some lovely little back eddies. And we see that the fish are settling in quite nicely after being stocked. This, the stocking like this is really important to us because not only are we providing opportunities for anglers and encouraging people to go angling for these barbel, but most importantly we're getting some evidence to how stocking benefits our rivers or if it benefits our rivers. And this is an important area down here is that we want to understand how barbel behave in the lower river. Um, we can see behind us that if you came here you wouldn't normally think that this part of the river is the sort of area that barbel would frequent because it's not fast flowing, it's not particularly gravelly. But however, they really like these areas for feeding. Uh, and what we do see, or we have seen over the last few years, is some really long movements, migrations of these barbel to go to spawning areas. So not very far from here we have the River Team and the River Team has been a really classic barbel river for many, many years. It has nice gravels in it, um, it's fast flowing and the barbel likes to go up there and spawn. However, we are seeing some impacts on our rivers, um, a lot of sediments in them, uh, we have water quality issues as well. So again, we want to see how these fish are going to behave. So this is a long term study. Uh, some of these tags, the pit tags, for instance, that are implanted in these fish, exactly the same that you'd have in your cat and dog. So these are going to be in the fish for the life of the fish. Now, we can't do this without the anglers. The anglers will be, uh, they'll be given a reader so they can actually read these tags. So over the years, hopefully, they will continually catch fish and we'll get to record those fish. Um, but really importantly, it's about working together. Um, if we don't have anglers catching fish, uh, we won't have any records for us and um, data to have a look at. Yeah, really importantly for the anglers, if they come across fish that we have stopped, they are marked. Um, now the first mark that you might see, especially if you're able to catch these fish at the size they went in today, is they have a blue mark uh, underneath them. This is a, a dye mark that we actually inject just underneath the scales on the underneath of the fish. So just up towards the pectoral fins underneath the fish there, there's a blue mark, a light blue mark. Now, we've done studies before using marked fish um, further up in the River Severn and we know that those marks probably only last a couple of years. In fact, these fish were actually marked a year ago with those marks and that, that was so that the fish farm could identify them as a year class that they wanted to tag. So that mark is starting to get a little bit faded. Now additionally on these fish, uh, some of them actually have a little scar and today we've seen that some of those scars still have the sutures in because we've actually had to do uh, a, a technique of putting these uh, transponders into the fish, we've actually had to insert them by surgical means. So some of them have sutures in, those will heal over time and you probably won't see those. But we did see today that we could see the little marks on the fish where we've implanted the tags. So um, that's another ID that is there. Now what's really important to us is the angling clubs that we're working with and we've provided with the pit reader equipment is we want them to record every fish. So that's just check every fish to see whether they have one of these tags in. Not just have these fish got pit tags in them, but 50 of the 250 that we put in today also have what we call acoustic tags. Now those tags will run for a, a total of 400 days and they're sending out a little ping. So this acoustic ping 
and up and down this river through other research that we've been doing, looking at other species like shad, salmon, sea lamprey and other coarse fish species and working with the academic institutions that we do like Bournemouth, we have listening stations that are actually in the river and they will listen out for these fish when they move anywhere near and track up the river and we'll be able to track those at the moment as far as Shrewsbury and also much further down the river as well. We've got these going, in fact we have uh, receivers all the way down the Bristol Channel and even over to Ireland but these fish that we're tracking today they're not going to go down there we hope. So uh, further upstream we have listening stations around the fish passes that we've put in over the last few years. So there's some notable big fish passes on this river, one at Diglas in Worcester and then one at Beverley, Lincoln and Holt on, on the river as we go up and they've got listening stations in there. Now we have been tracking some barbel for the last few years and to give you an example we've had one barbel that we've tracked all the way from here, so at the mouth of the river team and he's gone all the way to Shrewsbury up river. Um, and he's not just done it one year, he's done it four years in a row. And that's because we have these listening stations in and uh, the pit tag listening uh, devices in on some of these fish passes. But what we do see moving through our fish passes, we have a, a, a fantastic window into fish movements at Diglis. Uh, literally, we are filming every fish that goes past there, is those small fish are on the move and they're side by side with the adult fish. So we're seeing that these fish are using the fish passes that we've installed and that's really important and it really does show that you know it's not just salmon that migrate or some of the, the traditional migratory species like salmon and eels but also that these coarse fish want to move through the system to enable them to get to good spawning areas and that's what we think is the most important thing about having healthy sustainable stocks is allowing them to move through the river so the river team that's very close to here is not that many years ago we actually removed or reduced the weir at Powick and again we're seeing there with listening stations that we have in that barbel and other coarse fish species are using that free way if you like to get up river and I think that that ultimately has to be the answer for a lot of rivers. Not all fish passes are successful and not, not all fish will choose to go up a fish pass but if we don't have a barrier in the river, so if we remove them entirely, then there's, there are no obstacles to those fish and all fish can go up those rivers and get to the areas that they want to get to, to spawn. If any anglers do come across any of the fish um, that we've put in today with a blue mark, just take a good photograph of that fish. If you can possibly measure it, that would be fantastic. Um, uh, and weigh it, absolutely brilliant. And you can get in touch with us at the Environment Agency. You can uh, look at the Environment Agency online.gov.uk um, and just get in touch with us through our inquiries. One of our local fisheries officers will get in touch with you and uh, we can get that information from you. It's really important that this work is funded by rod license revenue that you all pay for as an angler. Um, and we want to make sure that we, you know, we get that information out there, so we will produce reports on this. Our local fisheries officer that is here, Laura Bullock, is the lead for this project, uh, is doing an absolutely sterling job, and we'll keep in contact with all the clubs that are around here, um, but hopefully we'll get a chance as well to put some of this data and information out there more broadly um, in the future um, for anglers to have a look at. And, um, you know, long may it continue. This is a, a great way of working together, uh, citizen science, working with anglers, getting information, see how these fish behave, but importantly it's all about telling us how we have sustainable stocks for the future. For the Environment Agency, stocking fish is always a bit of a conundrum really um, and it's really important that we make sure that we do it the right places at the right time for the right reasons. Um, working with anglers here and putting some of this stocking into science is really good. Um, we have done stockings on the Severn that previously have looked at sort of mark and recapture but the return rates haven't been very good so this is why we want to bring the new technology into this one and our plan is certainly over the next three years we'll, we'll continue with this stocking I hope for a bit longer but it all will depend really on working in partnership uh, with the academic institutions, finding the money, that's really important. These tags are not 
inexpensive. You know, the acoustic tag is £250 a time. Um, so we have to find money and in partnership with academic institutions and ourselves to do that. The pit tag is pretty inexpensive, so uh, that's not such a problem that's there. So we hope to continue this. Uh, again, a massive thank you to our fish farm at Calverton because they have provided us a service um, to actually rear the fish in the first place and provide the facilities that we need to actually implant these tags. And importantly, the tags, um, it, it, it can't be done by anybody for any reason. It has to be done under a home office license and we have to use the academic institutions and the professionals that we have that do that for us. Most importantly, I just want to say uh, thank you very much uh, to the people that have come to us in the first place, which is Mark from the Picks and Manglers here in the Syndicate. Um, he came to us asking about stocking barbel. That's the right way to do it. So thank you, Mark, for coming to us. And I hope that we've reached a, a, a sort of nice little bit of a conclusion here as we're working together as citizen scientists. Thank you to Bournemouth University. Uh, Bournemouth University are the academic institution that we primarily are working with with the movements of coarse fish. Uh, and the tracking devices that go in here. Uh, Jonas Polder, who is doing his PhD at Bournemouth University, really important. He's the person actually putting the listening devices in the water out there and collating all of that data that uh, he's getting. So thank you to him. And finally as well um, is the Environment Agency people that are involved in this. There is Laura Bullock um, who is the lead for the project. Uh, she is a fisheries technical officer for this area and she's been working extremely closely with uh, the Angling Club here and the Barbel Society and others that are working on some of the other tracking studies that are going on. Um, and ultimately we couldn't do it without Calverton rearing those fish. So. Thank you very much to Rab that was down here today that brought the fish along from Calverton Fish Farm um, who have been rearing those fish for almost three years now and looking after them. So um, none of this would happen if we didn't buy our rod licenses. So all anglers that are out there, it is your rod license that helps pay for these, it's helped pay for some of the pit readers, it's helped pay for some of the tags and ultimately it helps pay for the fish that are reared at Calverton Fish Farm. So, um, you know, that's where your license money goes. That's why it's really important. Um, and hopefully, you know, we're going to get some good outcomes from this.